Hei kōnei rā e te puna o te ao marama. Ka hoki nei tēnei, e kore e hoki anga nui mai. I took this photo on the morning after my brother passed away. Actually, I took about a dozen photos, each just a few seconds apart. I'm not exactly sure why I thought to take them other than the very instinctual knowledge that there would always be a before and an after this moment. And I wanted to capture it. If, if I'm honest, I wanted to reverse it. And in this liminal space, time really does feel negotiable, as if you could walk right up to death in your dreams and speak to it. And for a moment, I really believed that, like Maui, I might be capable of slowing the sun. It fell on me to tell our mother. At that time, she was sailing through her own dreams in an opposite time zone. So I said to the Fano, let her sleep. And so we waited five excruciating hours for her to wake up to us, to catch up to us. And with every passing minute, my brain negotiated and bargained and dug in, holding that fiery dawn back from my mother's rest. Last year, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, issued another report confirming what we already know. Now, for those not familiar with the lingo, the IPCC is a UN body made up of, uh, West, of international scientists and experts who make observations about the climate and uh, issue reports and make recommendations. So this latest report contains yet more evidence that global warming is real and that the cause is irrefutably human activity. That report made me think of my sleeping mother and the severity of the knowledge that she was yet to wake up to. I took a moment in the dark to prepare myself before dialing her number. Anyone who has ever been the messenger of devastating, disordered news knows that more, you need more than words. Information and facts alone are not enough. You need courage. You need heart. So back to that IPCC report. I'm going to mention it a few times just in case uh, you need reminding. Sorry for that. Um, so uh, it's quite long. You can be forgiven if you haven't read it. Not many people probably have hundreds, thousands of pages long, so pay to pay. Um, but it does include a number of options to help mitigate the impacts of climate change. And to be honest, some of these sound a little bit like Maui's plight to slow the sun. The promise of future technology that will buy capitalism just a little bit more time to keep polluting and consumers a little bit more time to keep consuming is for some the holy grail. Habits, notoriously hard to change. If it's possible to slow or reduce the impacts of climate change without drastic sacrifices to individual lives and to the economy, then why wouldn't we? That word mitigate comes from the Latin mitis, meaning mild or soft. When my mother answered the phone, she knew straight away that something was wrong. She asked me who. And I heard myself say my brother's name. My mother wanted to know how he died, but I couldn't tell her. Not then and not for weeks. I used language and words that skirted the details. Shielding my mother from the grimness and the violence of what I knew and what I had seen. But she kept asking, she just kept asking. Eventually a counsellor explained to me that I wasn't alleviating my mother's pain by withholding information. I wasn't protecting her, I was just delaying her ability to deal with it. She suggested that I take my mother back to the place where my brother died and be honest with her. So climate change, you'll all be familiar with the 
the ways in which it is commonly identified, usually by its symptoms, extreme weather systems, flooding, drought, wildfires, sea level rise. When scientists identify its causes, the attention shifts to the mining and burning of fossil fuels and carbon dioxide emissions. But the symptoms are so much broader than just what we observe in the physical environment, and the causes are not merely human activity, but the values driving the human activities. Many of you will be familiar uh, with the story and possibly even with these illustrations. So when Maui captures Tamanui Tera, he delivers blow after blow after blow after blow after blow to his forehead until Tamanui Tera cries out in agony. Now Maui is many things. He's often portrayed as mischievous and I think that's fairly accurate actually. Reminds me a little bit of my brother. <laughs> um, but Maui is not stupid. Maui knows that without light, people are going to die. So he releases the sun and life resumes, but this time with ease and with balance. This pūrāko, this ancient Māori creation story, is not a myth, it's not a legend, it's mātauranga, it's knowledge and wisdom about how to conduct ourselves in the world. It's a guide, it's a caution. Like the IPCC report, although admittedly much shorter and memorable and easier to illustrate, it is just a story. It's a story with an important message. The powerful and the wealthy are beating the planet into the submission. Enough is enough. These binds on Papa Tuanuku must be released. The pursuit of individual wealth and unbridled economic growth and overconsumption, that world leads to death. The sun has set on that world and it is time to prepare for the dawn of a new one, replacing the values of greed and waste and arrogance and excess with humility and ease and balance between all living things. Three months after my brother passed away, I finally found the courage to take my mother, my mother back to the place where he took his last breaths. Um, my mother sat down on a tree stump next to the river, surrounded by bush, and the sun was shining, and the tui were swooping and singing, and the crazy thing is, it was so much more beautiful and peaceful and far less frightening than either of us had expected. My mother thanked me for bringing her. She said she just needed to see it with her own eyes. And as we sat, we talked about my brother's life and we talked about the nature of his death. Like climate change, suicide is often treated as a distinct issue with its own isolated causes. Mental illness, substance abuse, stress, unemployment, loneliness, trauma, depression, you're familiar with all of it. The coroner's report sets out in aching detail the manner in which my brother caused his own death. That's akin to the IPCC report describing the causes of climate change. But why did he die? Why are the ice caps melting? It's the same answer. Disease, disconnection, lack of balance. We experience the rising tides and the floods and the droughts and the wildfires within ourselves, within our chests, within our whānau, within our communities. The isolation and frustration and pain that we feel is the same as the ache within Papatuanuku. The mental health crisis is just a mirror for the environmental crisis. Environmental degradation is a form of self-harm. Would we gouge out our own flesh and then fill it with our waste? Why do we do it to Papa Tūnuku? <sighs> the reason suicide rates among indigenous people all around the world is higher is because climate change hit us first a long time ago. Suicide rates among Māori men in Aotearoa, New Zealand are double that 
of non-Māori, this too is a tohu of climate change, but by another name, colonisation. The evidence is everywhere we look. I hate that my brother has become a statistic. I hate that statistics have made a cliché of the intelligent, curious, original, one-of-a-kind guy that he was. He was an inventor. He was smart, he was funny, he was much loved by his friends. He was a father, he was a son, he was an uncle. He was sometimes fearless. And he was a really, well, he thought he was a really good dancer. <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> People take their own lives in solitude in much the same way as glaciers retreat and ice caps melt. Most of the time, we're not close enough to be a witness. But just because it is beyond climate science to show exactly how these seemingly disparate events are connected does not mean that they are not. This is the last photo that my brother ever sent me. I didn't know it then but the sun had already set on his final day in this world and he is gone now to the ancestors beyond the veil to become a star, never to return this way again. There's no easy way to make that knowledge less painful. This is not an attack on Western science or modern technology. That's not what this is about. This is about language. This is about stories, the stories we tell ourselves and each other. It's about the courage and the heart to tell the truth about the causes of climate change. Last month, the government released its first national adaptation plan, a plan for how it's going to deal with climate change. Another document, probably you haven't read, 140-odd pages, and not a single one of those thousands of words is the word colonisation mentioned. How can you deal with a problem if you haven't correctly named it? Climate change is not merely a challenge, it's a total ecological crisis. Crisis from the Greek krisis, meaning the turning point, meaning the point at which action becomes knowledge and you decide to do something. We need only to look at the utterly devastating impact on our native wildlife, on our taonga species, to see it. And once you see it with your own eyes, you cannot ignore it, you cannot deny it, you have to deal with it. And this knowledge applies to all of us, not just to the powerful and wealthy and the decision makers, the corporates, the politicians, but to every single person in this room and all the micro decisions that are in our power to make. We must act in the best interests of Papatunaku because our futures, our well being, are inextricably linked. Healing Papatuanuku is self-care. This is active suicide, prote suicide prevention, reconnecting with Papatuanuku. Restoring our relationships with Papatuanuku is restoring our relationships with each other and with ourselves. And surely, surely the future that awaits our children and their children and their children is more beautiful and more peaceful than the one we are currently experiencing right now. My message today, my idea worth spreading is not a new one emerging. It is an old one, an ancient one reasserting itself. It is fundamentally an indigenous message that speaks to the interconnectedness of all things. I am the land and the land is me. Ko au te whenua, ko te whenua, ko au. Kia ora. <laughs>